They see her glory, but they don't know her story. They see her life, but they don't know her sacrifice. Member of Parliament for St. James West Central, Attorney General, politician, mother for many, a beautiful wife, a lawyer. She was at the bar and at the bench. And right now, she's here with me on Women in Politics. Her name is Marlene Patricia Malahu Fort. She is the Member of Parliament for St. James West Central and my very special guest on Women in Politics. Good afternoon to you, MP. How are you? Good afternoon. What am I to say? <laughs> fluff, fluff, fluff. <laughs> well, Kitty? the fluff is here. Everything is here. The niceness is here. How are you doing? It's a lovely day. It's a little hot, but it's breezy. Yes. And you catch me at home. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having us in your yes. beautiful home. Um, you're looking radiant. You're looking relaxed. Uh, I know that we're on the cusp of an election, but you don't seem worried at all. Why is that? I generally take things in stride. It's part of the cycle. It has to come. Yes. There, are, there are enough things to stress us out, you know, yes. so we have to take things in stride. And how have you been managing and coping with the COVID-19 pandemic? I don't know if I'm the only one, but wearing the mask is so uncomfortable. Uh -huh. But I have to do it for protection. Yes. So you kind of gauge. COVID has just hit us really, really hard. But it has been amazing to be part of a government that is just determined to ensure that our people are protected. And yes. that has been a saving grace. So at home, my husband stays in. Yes. And he says, be very careful. Don't contaminate me because yes. I am taking my best care to... Yes avoid anything and i really just stay out of harm's way it's a little difficult when you go in the constituency and yes. you say to persons we have to keep the distance just yes. last week i shifted back from a constituent and he looked at me and said miss i want me. Ask me. Ask me. yes yes and i had to say no 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 remember social distance no yes. and if i get it is going to cause problem not just for me but yes. for all of government including the prime minister so some people they just don't understand yes. the distance it's a readjustment yes. because as i've also said i think we are communal people and so naturally when i see you i want to hug well go on my yeah, hi and then in the middle of the high it's like ah yes. yes so it's it's a readjustment that we all have to yes. um endure in terms of learning about yourself, is there any lesson that COVID taught you about Marlene? A lot of people had a lot of time to reflect, introspect. Did you learn anything about yourself during that time? I think it was a reminder of how much I love the outdoors yes. growing up. Just the simplicity of life that I grew up with. So in between, unlike many persons who have the luxury of not showing up for work and working from work, I had to, yes. you know, the team of us in government managing, even though we did a lot of Zoom meeting. But for a week or two or two and a half, I was out of the constituency. Yes. And that was unusual because I'm here every week. So not traveling. And when we had Zoom meetings, I literally started planting. Yes. Planting a plant, cutting down. I decided I'd cut back the little plants. It's yes. not a lot of space. And just watching them spring back has been nothing short of amazing. So you have the green thumb. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't quite say I have the green thumb, but I think what interests me is watering them. Yes. Don't do a lot of watering with the restrictions, but I end up watering myself when I try to water them. Absolutely. Well, which I is know part the of the childhood. Yes. You know, you just bring the water on yourself. And speaking about your childhood, you grew up in Paul Island in West Milan. Bet you never hear about I've it. I've never heard about that place. What was it like for a young Marlene Malahu growing up in Paul Island? So Paul Island is in the middle of the sugarcane fields. Yes. You don't pass there. You have to be going there. there. Yes. Right. In the Frome Belt, but in the middle of the sugarcane field, I'd say between Grange Hill and Little London. Had a very happy childhood. I was the last of my tribe. Yes. Big family. Loved and protected by all. Some persons claim that I was spoiled by my father. I say otherwise. Oh, well, you were the wash belly. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 
but simple childhood in yeah. the country, which I think is, um, for me, remains my true delight. Yes. What were some of the morals and values you were taught by your parents or instilled in you by your parents that you still hold true to today? You know, that would take a whole program, Oh, right? wow. <laughs> Women in politics take two. <laughs> so so my, my father was Indian, and I grew up in a biracial family, as, as we say. Spent a lot of time around my father, who taught me a lot of things. He had very, very strong morals. Yeah, what was his but name? But first, Alexander the Great, Alexander Mahler, who a blessed memory. He died uh, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was my father's daughter. Yes. Um, loved, loved, loved by him. And he was one of those fathers who would tell me. In fact, those persons in my childhood know the little expression, your father love you like how ants love sugar. Wow. Wow. That, that he, he, he was a proud father and yes. a proud father of, of his daughters. Spent a lot of time. Um, values of honesty, integrity, education meant a lot to him. Yes and um, serving others, being kind and helpful to others. And my mother now was a strong Jamaican woman. And what was her name? My mother's name is Euphemia. Euphemia. You know, sir, big up Miss Euphemia. You know, they call her Miss P. Miss they Miss really call her Miss P. P. How are you yes. doing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But what, what I think um, was special is, is that it was not the norm for children to grow with mother and father. Yes. So a lot of single parents, yes. so um, the a, lot family of, setting. a lot of grandparents, but my parents insisted that their children had to be raised by mother and father. And I think for that, I am eternally grateful to my mother yes. and my father. Absolutely. I couldn't imagine my life being otherwise. But then there are so many others who have not had that blessings yes. and, you know, just, just give thanks. So did that help? So having both parents around, having those morals and values instilled at, an, at a very early age, did that, did that help you to excel at Manning's High School? Because you were the head girl there talk to me about your days at Manning's my mother claimed I was a very headstrong child yes in fact the story is quite interesting so my mother said when she was pregnant with me the doctor told her to abort oh wow because she was miscarrying abort 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 she said absolutely not no abortion she almost miscarried but she didn't and um, when she went into labor my dad was taking her to the hospital. I was the only one born in a hospital. Those mm. days, the midwives came into the community and delivered the baby. So I was, she was being taken to Savlamar Hospital. Yes. Father met in an accident, tear mm. off the side of the car that she was sitting on. So they drove to the hospital <laughs> with no door on her side. And when she arrived at the hospital, doctors and nurses on strike. Oh, wow. No, sir. A so it was quite, of it was quite an <laughs> eventful, birth. eventful birth. <laughs> yes. Um, she said I was born at 7.45 a.m. And up to midday, I was still covered in placenta. She recalled very carefully, clearly because of what was happening. So probably the forces were conspiring for me not to come on this side of eternity. But here I am. Here you are. And here so you are. So to that exciting. extent, yes. I think um, as a little shielded and protected. Yes. But as a last child, and, and I, I don't think it's unique to me because last children's syndrome, you get the chance to make your own decisions. Yes. So as long as you're not faced and you're not rude yes. and you're doing well you in have school, manners. you have manners. That yes. was the most important thing we growing up in the country. Yes. We were told you just have to have manners and show respect for people. So you went to school overseas as well. Uh, you went to Yale, you went to Harvard, and you, of course you went to Barbados for law school. Did you always want to be an attorney at law? Yes, was that man, from always your passion? Well, you know when you grow up in country and you talk a lot. Yes, yaton laya. Right. Yes. You're labeled so so i grew up in a household where we were allowed to express ourselves as long as we were not rude we were noisy and we we spoke but it was encouraged i remember my father would line us up and told us how to introduce ourselves and at the end of it we had to say and i'm alexander malahu's daughter oh wow it was the identity so when you go out you have to remember that you're not going out alone yes. so for all my life i knew that i had a whole tribe and a whole clan behind me um yeah, I, I could argue myself out of any situation yes. and I could argue on anybody's behalf. So from primary school, yes, I, decide, I decided that I wanted to do law primarily. I wanted to teach and then I wanted at one stage to be a pastor. Oh, wow. Amen. 
<laughs> no how, did that, how did you change that? Because I grew up going to church every day. Yes. Every day? What denomination? Oh, that's interesting. Evangelical, Pentecostal evangelical, yes. but this small community had about four churches. So we had the Wesleyan Holiness, which was my paternal side church. We went there too, because we had to go to Bible school. And my mother's side, after the evangelicals came and they set up church, we went there too, and yes. which cousin got to church. So it was between school and church. Yes. So it, that was a model that was set in front of me. Um, and you're taught that, you know, when you become a child of the king, you're just the very best. Yes. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. And those were the formative thoughts in my head and many others. So you go to church on Monday was young people's meeting, Tuesday was prayer meeting, mm -hmm. Wednesday was another thing, Thursday was this practice I couldn't sing, and then you have youth club on Friday and you go to church. That's how I grew up. Very well. So you're very well so churched. A, a lot of people don't know that. Yes. And then it was one so of those. So are you baptized? Of course. Oh, amen. Of yeah. course. I was baptized at, as a teenager. At what age? 15, 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give a backslide. Lord of mercy, the Christian walk is difficult, you know. <laughs> In Jesus' it's name. It's difficult. No, yes. no, humanity is broken. It's yes. broken. And it's, it's, it's a struggle. But it is in that context that my values and principles are grounded. So. How has the education that you have attained uh, from the University of the West Indies, uh, the Norman Manley Law School, uh, also the Harvard University in the United States, King's College in the UK from where you got your master's, uh, and you also went to Yale, uh, all of those experiences outside of Jamaica, uh, how did that help? to form who you are today. So growing up in this little community, my father would always say there is a whole big world ahead. In fact, when I left Manning's, I was actually supposed to be going to Russia to study at oh. Moscow State University. Um, because of what was happening at the time with Perio Strike or Glass Nop, I didn't eventually go as others who had been awarded scholarship. Yes. But it was always, um, drummed in us that there is a whole wide world to see and you should try and see it yes, yes. and so see it you did still seeing it <laughs> still, still, seeing, still it. seeing it still seeing do it. do you see a lot of it with your husband uh you have your husband who uh, you referred to earlier talk to me about how you met him and how did that love blossom you want me to put out my business? Yes. Let me tell you something. Yes. <laughs> Love is always wonderful. And we want to know so the So on, on August 3, I'll be married for 19 years. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. My, my husband is not in politics. Yes. You know, he is the retired president of the Court of Appeal. Um, we met in the profession. Yes. And um, he is much older than I am. But I remember him telling me clearly that his intentions were quite, quite honorable. Yes. <laughs> and um, began first discussing legal matters. And, you know, if you meet people, you interact with them, and it, and it blossomed. Was I in trepidation? A lot of trepidation. Mm -hmm. So a mischievous sister of mine, who's almost my best friend, sister, decided to tell my father about my dating this man who was so much older than I am. Yes. But my father is classic, you know. He was classic, so he listened out. And he heard my sister Jackie, and then he looked on both of us and he said, Well, my daughters, it's better to be an old man's pet than a young man's slave. <laughs> you know, I like, I like Alexander. He, I like he went on to say <laughs> that when an older man takes up with a younger woman, people will talk about yes. her gold digging and yes. what she after. But just remember, you have your own. Don't be bothered by, people, by what people will say. Yes. When they get to know you, they'll understand that you're not going down that path unless the heart is there. Yes. And that was very good advice. My mother, on the other hand, looked at me very sternly and said, you sure is not a nurse I'm looking for yeah. this older age? <laughs> Men and women have different perspectives. Yes. But my husband is an amazing Jamaican who has served the country in many capacities the last two being president of the Court of Appeal and yes. previously as director of public prosecutions. So my entire... Um, family life is grounded in law, yes. law abidingness, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, respect for the legal and judicial system. Yes. Those are my internal traditions and, and just building on what I grew up with. Did you ever get 
uh, you know, angry or annoyed or feel attacked when people would make that comparison of his age and your age and they're talking about actually, it. Did actually, that you at all? How actually, did you no, that? you know, actually, no, because I think it's not unusual for people to look on. I mean, people will refer to him as um, my father and I as his daughter, so we would joke about it. I say, if you make a decision and you're brave enough to take it on, then you have to deal with it. I really wasn't bothered by what people said. I knew I made my decision for the right reason. And yes, people were very mean. I remember once we were invited to a function by another highly placed public servant, and she knew who I was, and, uh, and she looked and said, oh, what was the comment? Something about my father. I said, oh no, he's not my father, and you know that. Wow. And I said to, to, to the husband, I said, come. Somebody don't invite you to their function and turn around to be cheeky. Yes, so we're going, and he, he was very fine, and we left. I said, thank you for the invitation, but clearly you have made us not welcome here. Yes. Don't, don't matter to me. And what does he think about your winning streak in politics? Does he uh, support I it? think my husband's heart is broken that I went into politics. Oh, why? Tell us. Because I was on the bench. Yes. I, I, you know, what is now the parish court. And he thought that I had a most promising career on the bench. Yes. Um, but he also, I think, understood that I go after my passion. And anything I feel strongly about, I will pursue. But I think he's, he, he doesn't get involved politically at all. Yes. He watched and he reminds me that, um, remember, I came to politics having had solid professional experience. You don't have to descend into the gutter. You don't have to do and exhibit the worst part of politics, which make people think that nothing good happens there. Yes. So to maintain Your dignity. my dignity yes. and to maintain the level of professionalism. And his counsel is very wise, Yes. very wise. He has the capacity to criticize in a way that you can only make amends. Yes. In other words. You have to, yes, sir. Yes. I totally understand. <laughs> but, no. but he's very, very supportive otherwise. Yes. But he's, he's non-political. People looking on Marlene Malahu Fort would think Marlene looks very feminine, uh, you know, fearless, but very timid or very gracious. I mean, the rigors of politics would not be for you. Uh, to, it's, it's grueling. Uh, it's hard. It can be very um, demanding. How does Marlene transform from the attorney general, the lawyer, the judge, to the member of parliament for rather difficult places in Jamaica and constituents who require and demand a lot of you? See, I think one, I'm, I'm big in training. I, I think that for any skill that is required for a task, you can acquire the skill. Some people may have natural proclivities, just like how oh, you have the personality yes. for it, you know, and you have the flow for it. So, so you may come with talents and you may come with natural proclivities, but I also believe that any skill that is required can be acquired yes. and can be taught. So for me, it's understanding that there is myself and there are roles. And all of us have different roles. So your Absolutely. role as a parent, your role as a wife, my role as an attorney general, my role as a member of parliament, and then there is Marlene, me. Yes. And many of the privileges are attendant on the roles we carry. So if you're not grounded in your sense of who you are yes. as a person, you may find that you become defeated when you don't have the roles and the privileges of office. So I was very fortunate that very early in my life I understood that difference. And so when I am in office and I'm in a role, I understand what is required of me in the role. But make no mistake, I'm neither defined nor confined by the many roles that I have attendant on me at this stage. I make sure I understand what is required of me, and I also demand my private personal space because otherwise it becomes really chaotic yes. and almost difficult to handle. And to separate the yes. two. Yes, so that's, that really, that's really it. My sense of who I am is not entirely dependent on what public office I hold. Yes. It's dependent on me as a person first and foremost, and that's why people chat not really bother me. Yes, you're about broad. You understand? Um, and, and it's not for the faint at heart. I'm talking about the chat. Um, you are the Attorney General. When the Honorable Prime, Honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness appointed you AG back in 2016, what did that mean for you? How significant was that? Truth be told, initially I had declined. Um, I had declined the role. I'd what initially made you change declined your mind? Um, 
persons who spoke to me. And why did you decline? Uh, I, I felt that having come into politics, it is not what I, if I had wanted to stay in the law and stay in the practice of law, I would not have come into politics in that traditional sense and I wanted to do other things in the political realm. Yes. Right. People jump on the hate Marlene train a lot. Really? Uh, yes, it, especially on them. social media and they will speak a lot of venom and spew a lot of yes. it. Do you read the things about yourself and <sighs> you know how do you cope with, how do you filter so you don't get caught up or dragged down by what they say? I think a lot of times people will externalize. There is something called positive and negative transference. Yes. I don't know you but my spirit check you and you remind me of something that's good, yes. so I automatically like you. The same is true on the flip side. Um, I think a lot of times people react to the role and they react to things and it's not really about me. And many times too, it's not about you entirely, but it's about other people and where they are on their journey and how they, their capacity to deal with issues. If someone criticizes, and I believe that it is valid, um, even if it is malicious, I have the capacity to look at it and take it on. And in the same way, if you compliment me and you mean well or you say something and I think is nonsense, I dismiss it. So for the most part, I don't dwell on too much negativity because yes. what you feed yourself is important. Yes. And I tell you the truth, I really don't feel it. You know, I think there must be a whole hedge of protection around me. <laughs> so when they, send the dart, <laughs> when, when they send the dart, something else is absorbing it before it hits me. Yes. Um, if you are whole and if you are healed inside, you can't injure people. So a lot of persons are broken and hurting. Yes, and, and it's hurt something people, that you hurt people. absolutely, and mm. it's something that I understand very easily, very quickly. Um, perspective within the political space to be a good laborite or a good comrade, you have to exhibit the worst of nastiness and political tribalism. I understand that and I dismiss it, even from my own supporters, the extreme poles. Um, and there are others who are just set up as attack. And there are those who genuinely will ask a question and will take it because there was a time when I wasn't political and I knew I didn't assess things from a partisan perspective. So it's along the spectrum. I read some of it, the others I just dismiss and move along. They have their things to do, I have mine. I'm not gonna let people disable me before I'm sufficiently enabled to do what the good Lord has sent me to do. Yes. Well, Dr. It's as simple as that, you know. Dr. Andre Horton, right, yes. Yes. Um, for the PNV, yes. is gearing up to challenge yes. In yes. your constituency. Yes. You are the sitting MP. Yes. Why should persons choose and vote for Marlene Malahu Fort for another term? Simply because there is still so much more to be accomplished. So much has been done, but so much more to be accomplished. By the time you get to understand a, a, a seat, I came into the seat not knowing much about it. My style is not one of fluff. <laughs> And, and I mean, I'm not, I don't mean, I, I operate without fanfare. I take time to get to understand the people I'm serving and that, because that is how you will know what makes a difference for them. So a lot of what I have done politically, unfortunately, is not out in the public because it is my own dislike for the medialization of everything that kind of propelled me to, to politics. Um, I have done so much, so much, and I have seen the transformation. If the good Lord were to say, well, you know, your time is up, I know that I would have been a, a good and faithful servant so far. Yes. But there is still so much to be done. Uh, my passion is to ensure that government works better for the people. Yes. And it takes time to understand the government. Um, MP work is not picnic business. Let me put it up in front. It yes. requires a steady, sober head, sober mind. Not one that come and go, or that is under the influence of some things here and the other things. You have to understand what it's about. It's not about wanting um, fame and glory for yourself. We have had too much of that in the past. As a nation, we have failed to realize our potential. So my people know, so when I go out, I go to bat for them. Yes. When I sit in the cabinet and I sit in the seat of power, their perspectives are very much represented on the table and I will fight for them. Yes. And when you go in the community and you see the transformation, I'm gonna take you to the community time permitting. When yes. I came here, you know, about two days after or the day after a horrible murder was committed in daylight around 9 a.m. And before the victim died, no police could have gotten there in time. No ambulance could have gotten there because the road was so 
bad, literally. When people talk about oh, them need road in it, you have to understand that it is a medium of conveyance, Absolutely. moving them from one place to the next. It's not just yes. noise that they're making, it affects their life. Livelihood. 45 yeah. years, nobody never stop and look up there. And I said I was going to stake my representational claim on it. You're going to go and see today Good road. what it was and what, but it's a difference that it has made for the people. So in terms of infrastructure, there's over 48 roads get fixed here, you know, wow. and it's, it's, it's fight, literally fight for it, fight for standards, with the drainage, engineering standards. It's also about, so on that side, and there is a water problem. Yes. Um, I've had five major tanks put in right here in St. James. We generate over 15 million gallons of water. Five go to Lucy and 10 here, and yet people in 2020 can't get water yes. in their pipes. Yeah. That kind of injustice moves me. Well, I'm very interested and excited uh, to go to your constituency and see what it's all about. It's I've about the people, it's not about Marley. I've never been, and you're representing them. But finally, AG, MP, Marlene, Patricia, Malahu <laughs> Fort. As a woman in politics, how do you put measures and policies in place to positively impact the lives of the women that you serve? You know, I, I have always worked on women's causes yes. all my life. So in my teenage years, I was a rights advocate as a young teenager. In fact, at that time, most of the work was done through the other political organization, but I hadn't viewed it as such. Championing rights, when I left law school and I was a prosecutor. I dealt with a lot of issues of sexual violence, the rape, the incest, the carnal abuse, the domestic violence. Um, I am one who believe that in the same way that others have paved the way for us and we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before, then you have to pave the way for others. So for me you now is to walk through the door and leave it wide open for others, not to close it because I have gone through it. Yes. Um, I, 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 Oh, women are, are special. Oh, our women are, are special. They are hardworking people. Um, you know, I think it's really about showing a lot of them who have fallen by the wayside. Many of them have ability, but because of circumstances in their families, they were not able to attain an education, and so it has limited what they need to do. But there is so much potential, and it's getting government to respond and make sure the policies understand the realities of those women. I'm actually very excited about recalibrating government, the machinery of government, yes. and people who work in it to understand that you're not an entity unto yourself. All your roles and functions are designed in a way to ensure that people's lives are better off. And that doesn't, an understanding of that doesn't happen overnight. I've worked in government across all three branches and in media. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, so it's a, it's a unique perspective, but I think more than anything else, I really love the people. I never thought this political work has been the most humbling experience for me. Yes. Because yes, I came from rural Jamaica, but when you grow up in rural Jamaica the way I grew up, and your parents make you feel that you're the best thing next to sliced bread. In fact, not even sliced bread, good <laughs> as you. Sliced bread with some butter on right. it. <laughs> you know, you excelled academically, coming first in class every year from start to finish. You matriculate, you go into university. And mind you, I couldn't go into university if I didn't get scholarship, you know, because the economics and rural realities are limiting. Yes. Um, and, and you see what education has done my father used to say, in a literal way, my father would walk with me and he would say, if you have money, what you would do? And naturally, I think it's just Eastern wisdom. You know, it's, I would do this and I would build a house for this person and I would build a new church yes. and I would build a new school. And he would stop and he said, my daughter, the time is going to come when you will have it. Make sure you never lose the will when you have the way. You heard her viva voce in her own voice, formidable, fearless, and very strong, independent-minded woman in politics, Marlene Malahu Ford. When in Jamaica, I know I can always count on one place to get to where I'm going. I'm able to unlock the true Jamaican experience with budget car rental. There's a car for every mood, taste, and journey I plan to take. Whether it is business or a quick scenic trip around the island, budget has just what I need at four convenient locations. With my busy schedule, being able to book online makes it even more worthwhile. Budget is with me for the long haul.